This is the Science of GMOs. I'm Jessica Eyes, and today we're looking at the regulation process. And joining me is Dr. Marshall Martin, who is a professor of agricultural economics. How are you? Good. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome. So to get started, uh, just a very basic question, but what is a regulation process? Um, what does that even mean when it comes to food? Well, the regulation process goes back a long time in this country for things like the Food and Drug Administration. It goes back 100 years or more. But in the context of biotechnology, it began in the late 1980s and early 1990s when three government agencies formed what's called the Coordinated Framework. The Food and Drug Administration, the Environmental Protection Agency, and the Animal Plant and Health Inspection Service of the U.S. Department of Agriculture collaborate on the regulation of biotechnology. The USDA offers the field permits for testing in the field. The EPA looks at any environmental uh, issues and obviously the Food and Drug Administration looks at any impact it might have on, on human or animal health. Okay, great. And so what kind of regulation process would, I mean, you, you just described the, the, this framework, but uh, if you could walk me through the steps of a, of a, of a food or um, an, a product that has a GMO, that is GMO or is a GM ingredient, what, what kind of process does that go through? Well, let's use an example okay. to try to answer your question. So let's assume that you're a, a company that's a biotechnology company and a seed company, and you developed a trait that might provide more uh, resistance to an insect that could otherwise cause damage and would require insecticidal spraying. So the first step you would do after the laboratory research and maybe some greenhouse research, and you want to begin field testing, you would get a permit from the U.S. Department of Agriculture and its Animal Plant and Health Inspection Service that would give you permission based on what you uh, plan to do uh, from a, a safety and permit point of view to go out and do field testing upon which you collect data. Once you've collected that and decided you want to go to market with this, then you would submit a whole series of documentation, uh, research, uh, trial work to those three agencies. The lead agency would depend on the nature of the product, and so in this example, since it's an insecticidal property or trait, it would go first to the Environmental Protection Agency because it involves insects and it involves potentially the environment. But there would be dialogue or communication with the other two agencies along the way. Ultimately, the Food and Drug Administration would look at it in terms of was the protein that was involved and that trait potentially harmful to people or not. So ultimately, it's a decision jointly by those three agencies. But the lead agency depends uh, somewhat on the on the type of product or type of technology. Okay, and uh, there's been a lot of concern in the in the American public about um, the safety of GM products. And how can Americans uh, feel confident, or how do they know that what hits the shelf is is safe? Well, while it is a voluntary system, in reality, all companies that want to uh, develop a technology for commercialization choose to go through the process. They want to be assured of safety as well. Even universities. Papaya was developed by a land-grant university, uh, a trait to control a disease. They also went through the regulatory process many years ago. So whether it's a private company or a university, they all would follow this same system. And in, in a society where there are all kinds of lawsuits and concerns, they clearly want to follow the government regulations and guidelines uh, before they go to market. One of the concerns has been that it's not only an approval process in this country, you need to have approval in other countries before you want to commercialize if it's a product that will be exported into the international markets. So you need to go to the European Union or to China or to Canada or other countries for approval as well as approval by the agencies in the United States. Okay, and what about products, so those would be exports outward, but what about products coming in? Same uh, thing. Same thing. There's reciprocity. Okay. Oh, okay. So if it were developed by the European Union or Canada, we would want to do the same approval process here. Okay. So as a, as a, as a cross-check or, or checks and balances in the system. And I'm guessing this probably depends on the product, but how long, more or less, does the regulation process last? A long time. And it seems to be taking longer as we go forward in time. Uh, the research process to discover and develop the technology can take five to ten years. The regulatory process may, can, may take another five or more years, and it's different in each country. In the European Union, for example, for the most part, the scientific-based regulatory agencies have moved the approval process with some efficiently more or less like the U.S. But because of the number of member states and disagreements politically, it often goes to a decision by a political body in addition to the scientific body, and there can thus be further delays. We've seen a little bit of the same thing happen in China. On the other hand, Brazil, Canada, Japan have been uh, much more rapid and very similar to the process in the U.S. 
I'm so I'm I'm actually surprised. Um, so for a product here in the states to to make it from somebody's you know production facility all the way to the shelf in a grocery store can take 15 years. It could, in the extreme okay. case, it's probably closer to, to 8 to 10. 8 to 10. But okay. it really depends on the particular trait mm -hmm. and the amount of data because often one of those agencies that I mentioned will go back to the company and say, well, thank you for that information, but here are some more questions we have. Please do additional research and send us additional data to look at. Okay. So it's a give and take back and forth depending on uh, the agency having adequate information to answer the, the questions clearly. Great. Well, thank you so much, Marshall, for joining us. I really appreciate you uh, shedding some light on the issue of the regulation process. Surrounding You're quite welcome. GMOs.